the AI race is on. The next chapter in artificial intelligence is all about reasoning models. That means the model just does not spit out the information. It will take its time to process through the question before responding. It all started with OpenAI's O1 model, followed by Google Gemini's Deep Research. Now there's an underdog in the market, which is called DeepSeek V3, which is a Chinese model. This model is actually shaking up the internet and Twitter, uh, sorry, X, but it's also giving a tough competition to the industry giants. In today's session, I will be demonstrating all about this DeepSeek V3. We'll talk a little bit about its technicalities. We will talk about how long it took for the model to be trained. We will test this model's capability of web searching, reasoning, image reading capabilities, summarization, writing, and much, much more. Hey, my name is Bhavani Kola. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, this channel is all about educational tools, tips, and technology. So if you don't want to miss out on all the fun, please make sure you subscribe. So here I am on deepseekv3.org. I will leave the link in the description box below, but let's go ahead and take a look at its capabilities. The first thing I would like to start off with the benchmark compared to the other models. So let me go ahead and open this in a new tab. And here I am, and as you can see the MMLU, which is Massive Multitasking Language Understanding. DeepSeek V3 is ahead of GPT-4 and Claude 3.5 Sonnet. GPQA is Google Proof Question and Answers, the math, American math examination, the code force, NSW is again the GitHub repository solving capabilities. And here, DeepSeq V3 is by default beating all the models. I only wish they had a comparison between DeepSeq V3 and GPT-01, which is actually a reasoning model. But let's go back right here and let's take a look. It has advanced MOE architecture, which is a mixture of experts. That is, they use multiple expert models to come up with the response. There could be a combination of an expert that is expert in mathematics, one expert in coding, one in understanding the language, and much, much more. And as you can see, it has 671 total parameters, billion parameters, and 37 billion active parameters. And the extensive training is on 14.8 trillion high-quality tokens, while GPT-4 was 13 trillion tokens. And here you have all the extra capabilities of this model. It has a long context window, again, 128K, which is pretty much same as GPT-4. Now let's take a look at how to log into the model. So here you have www.deepseek.com. All you have to do is click start now. You can either log in or you can create an account and log in, or you can log in with your Google account. Again, please keep in mind that these models, the servers of these models are based in China. So please make sure you read the privacy policy before you decide to use this model. So once you click on login, I logged in with my account. Here you have your settings. Once you click on your settings, you have your language. Of course, that's English and Chinese. You have different themes, dark and light. I'm going to leave it to the dark. And the profile, you have your email address, your phone number, terms of usage and privacy policy. But there is no option of how you share your data. I don't think that option has been given to us. So please be mindful when you're using these um, this particular model. We will talk about the privacy in the end, but again, please make sure you read and go through that information. But before we dive into that, I do want to talk about the paper that talks about the technicality of this particular model. It has all the detailed instructions. And I've, again, I will leave the link in the description box below. And as you can see, the training cost of this model is approximately $5.58 million. And GPT-4 is 63 to $78 million, which is compared to GPT-4, this is very, very cheap. And I am also guessing that the API integration, the cost of the tokens will also be very, very low. So here is the multi-token prediction that this model uses. They do have a main model, which is a transformer model. Here are your input tokens. Again, explaining this in a very simple way. You have your tokens T1, T2, T3, T4. Here is your embedding layer that changes your tokens into vectors. They will be automatically sent into your transformer, which the major calculations are done. It could be the context, the understanding, and then you have the output head. And here you have the 
cross entropy, which is actually checking for accuracy and prediction. So your input layers are T1, T2, T3, T4. Your output is T5, and you're using cross entropy to check for accuracy. And as you can see, you have MTP model 1, MTP model 2. That means the input for this, the next model is T2, T3, T4, T5, and the outputs are T5 and T6. The same is here. The inputs are T3 to T6. The outputs are T6 to T7. So what's exactly is happening here is they're sharing the output head, as you can see, and they're also sharing the embedding layers. They're adding the extra normalization that is RMS, RMS, root mean square normalization. You're adding your transformer block here and also linear projection. So you're parallelly computing and predicting the tokens, which will enhance the accuracy and the efficiency of the model. Let's keep it to that for now and let's dive into the DeepSeq, which is right here. So again, to create a new chat, you will click on this and you can open and close your toggle, your sidebar. This interface pretty much does look like the GPT-4 interface. And before, when you ask this model, who are you? I think this model automatically spit out saying I'm GPT-4 model. But let's go ahead and test this model. I do have certain prompts that I want to test. So the first thing I would like to type in is, of course, we're talking about AI. But before I do that, I'm going to click on the deep think. I'm going to activate the deep thinking mode. And I'm going to paste what are the types of AI. And I'm going to click go. And here it's thinking and it's giving me the complete reasoning of what it's thinking. And it went too fast for me to read, but I would like to take a look at it. So as you can see, it did think for seven seconds and it's giving me the detailed explanation. All right, I need to explain different types of AI. Let's start with the big picture. First is the narrow AI, then the general AI or strong AI, the super intelligent. Now diving deeper, it's again giving me the thought process of this model. And as you can see, this is the entire explanation. For me, this is actually a waste of tokens, honestly. But again, here is all your information based on the thinking process. Now, this is really good. I'm not going to read all this for you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to test the model's writing capability. And I'm going to say, create a blog that I can post on LinkedIn. I'm asking it to use the information that it spit out and saying, create a blog for LinkedIn. And I'm going to click go. So it did think for eight seconds and it's giving me the thought process. And it says, all right, I need to create a blog for LinkedIn. So first I should recall what I know about AI previous conversations, different ways to categorize. And it's also telling me that the audience will be professional who are interested in AI, but may not be experts. So it has to give me more engaging possibly highlighting the relevance of understanding in today's workforce, which is really impressive. The thought process is really impressive. And it's giving me the complete uh, thought process. And it's also telling me I need to keep the language simple, avoid too much jargons, but still convey the key concepts accurately. Well, here is the thinking and here is the blog. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to copy this and create a LinkedIn blog and going to leave the link below so you can take a look and read. Now let's test the coding capability of this model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this prompt here. I said, design the HTML. Let me take a look if you can see that. I'm just going to move myself up. Design a HTML based quiz with multiple choice questions. Use custom styled checkboxes for the answer options and display the check marks when selected. Add a light blue background for the entire quiz. Include horizontal lines to separate each question. Ensure the layout and ADA compliant. Use the above information for the quiz. Include submit button to evaluate the user response and display their scores. And I'm going to, I don't need deep thinking for this one. So I'm just going to click go. Well, it did give me the entire code and it also gave me how it works, what I need to do, copy and paste it. And it did give me option to run in HTML. So let me go ahead and run this in HTML to see what happens. It did give me a background. I'm just going to randomly select. As you can see, I have custom checkboxes and click submit. And I do have a score two out of three. If you want, you can copy this into any of your LMS and then run this as well. So you can easily create a quiz using that information. Keep in mind, I use the information it spit out, but you can give a custom information, maybe a lesson, and then ask it to create quiz with different colors, emojis, however you want it. Now let's take it one more step further and let me go ahead and say, give me a simple flow chart in SVG format that outlines different types of AI. 
and let me click go. So here is my complete SVG code. It did not give me how long it taught because I did not activate the deep thinking mode. But all I have to do is simply open up the HTML, run the HTML, and there I have it. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, computer vision, narrow, weak, strong. Well, you know what I can do? I can use this SVG coding and create my SVG files and just copy and paste this in my presentations. Now let's open up a new chat and test its image reading capability. Well, you know what? Let me click deep think. Just, you know, why not? And I'm going to go ahead and paste this option. I copied this image from Twitter or X. And here it says, let me copy this instead of typing it in. I'm going to say, what does this image imply? I'm going to show you the image in a second. So it's reading the image. Let me go ahead and open up the image so you can see what I'm talking about. Here is the image. If you can see, this is a life of a PhD student and I wanted to see how this model is going to analyze this image. So let's move. It says the image title life of PhD students likely depicts the experience and challenges of commonly associated with PhD of giving it a screenshot from the figure. It might be humorous, analytical, illustrating the struggles, the triumphs of PhD life, blah, blah, blah. So it is analyzing that image. Now let me go ahead and take a screenshot of this particular image here of the multi-token prediction. And I am going to go back and paste it here. I'm going to ask it to explain in detail. I just want to see its image reading capability. Okay, so it is reading that image and it's giving me the explanation. I don't know what would have happened if I clicked the deep think, but it does a pretty good job explaining everything for me. So this is pretty good enough for me. And this is the image that I copied and pasted. So all I had to do was take a screenshot and just copy into the model and the model is explaining this entire image for me. Now let me start a new chat. Let me enable the deep thinking. Let me go ahead and upload the DeepSeq V3 paper. Okay, summarize the PDF file and go. The length limit has reached. The DeepSeq can only read the 38, first 38% 38 of the document. So it's reading and it is summarizing for me. So my understanding is it can read PDF documents and Excel document to summarize those files for us. Well, the last thing I want to test is the web search capability. So let me start a new chat. Let me ask for what is the current stock price of NVIDIA? Not the deep thinking, but I'm going to enable the web search. Hopefully it's not going to lock me out. It has found 48 results on the web that gives the stock price of NVIDIA. Today is January 5th in the United States, but it's January 6th. In in China, because the servers are in China, it says based on Jan 6, 2025, the NVIDIA stock is 144.7. And here is the NVIDIA stock price links where it's getting its information from. So let's go ahead and click on one of them. I can, oh yeah, I can reach it. There you go. It does have those links as well. And let's see if I can find a better uh, Investopia, da 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 da. You know what? I'm. Let me go ahead and take a look at the Google one. Here you go. The NVIDIA crop price, $144.47 as of Jan 6, 2025, according to the Chinese servers. But here is the price, which is absolutely accurate. And now let me test one last thing. Let me open a new chat. Let me close this. I have the prompt here so we don't waste time. I'm going to copy and paste it. Write 200 words on flaws of predictive AI with citations from peer-reviewed article and give me the source links. Well, it did give me 200 page. It did give me the links as well, but let me test if the links are correct. So this is what, okay, five keys. Let's take a look at this one. I just want to make sure that they are valid links. Okay, that is good enough for me. And here is another so unlike how GPT creates its random links, this is not creating any random links. It is giving me links that are valid. 
Now let's go ahead and try the model's reasoning capability that I've been waiting to try. So here I am on simplebench.com. This is a multiple choice text benchmark for LLMs. And all I have to do is copy and paste this multiple choice questions and see if DeepSeek passes or no. So let's go ahead and try this. Try it yourself. I did. Let me copy the first question here. I'm just going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. And let's see what happens. Oops. You know what? I think I enabled the wrong one. I'm going to stop, paste it, deep think, and then go. And I want to see what happens. Okay. It is giving me that logical thinking process. Okay. Let's go back and see how long did it think for. It thought for 37 seconds. And here is the thinking process of this model. And the final answer is 20. So let's go back and pick 20. Ooh, the answer is wrong. All right, that's okay. Let's go back to the next question and click go. So it did complete its process. Let's go back and see how long it thought for. Where is it? Oh my God, 34 seconds and what was the final answer? With all the reasoning, it says the purple ball is likely above the blue ball on the ground. So let's go back here. Where is the purple ball most likely to be in relation with the blue ball? Above the blue ball, that's what the answer said. So let's click. Well, it's again the wrong answer. Let's try one more and then I give up. I'm gonna go back, paste and go. Well, let's take a look. It finally taught for 35 seconds and all of this is the reasoning. I honestly think giving up the reasoning is also wasting the context window. And but again, um, and the final answer is Jimmy likely finished last. Uh, wish me luck. Jim, is it Jim or Jimmy? Let's see. Jim likely finished last. Jim likely finished last. Okay. All three answers are wrong for this model. I am not going to try one more. So there you have it. It did fail the benchmark and that's about it. That means this model does need a lot of logical reasoning, but it did pretty good on all the other stuff. So I don't know where the benchmark that they published in DeepSeek V3, where is it? DeepSeek V3 is all about this benchmark. But as of now, you saw that it did fail all three questions just like that with all the thinking. Last but not the least, it's very important that I also talk about the privacy policy here. As you can see, I will leave the link in the description box below. And here they clearly say the information you provide um, includes your user input, the uploaded files, all of that information will be used, including your IP addresses, your devices, cookies, and user patterns. And let's take a look at the data usage. They also talk about user inputs are analyzed to improve the models. Of course, every LLM does that. And let's take a look here. Data sharing, where is it? They will be sharing your data with the third-party service providers to operate and enhance their capabilities. Um, data security, where is, yeah. So please, please go ahead and read all the information. So the users must be responsible to make the decision if they want to use this model or no. And as of now, uh, these models, the DeepSeek servers are located in China and international users should consider potential privacy security implications due to the regulation standards. So I highly recommend go through everything, see if this fits your needs with your security information and what information is shared, what information is used. And once you're comfortable, give this model a shot or a try. Well, that's all I have for you today. If you have enjoyed this session, if you learned something about DeepSeek V3 model and you had fun with me testing this model and even watching the model fail the benchmark, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you think it's worth sharing and if there is someone who might want to know more about this DeepSeek V3, make sure you share this video. Like always, happy teaching and please take care of yourself and make sure you are updated with all the latest models out there because I will be making more videos 
just because I'm having so much fun learning and trying out these new features. But unfortunately, most of them are behind the paywall. There's nothing we can do. Until next time, ciao.